Hi ladies, I am Shannon Mitchell, a Black millennial business owner, the founder of Shalo Glow LLC, an all-natural skincare company that helps you glow from head to toe. I am a champion for your daily self-care, business care, and intentional wellness. Hey y'all, I'm Christine Gotro, a white social justice advocate, an international speaker, coach, published author, and dancing social worker who helps you upgrade yourself and community care. Together, we are Women Connected in Wisdom, a podcast grounded in the eight dimensions of wellness. And we love to bring on expert guests like our guests today and just have these conversations because, you know, how do we do this? How do we do it? (laughs) Especially with what we're talking about today, right? Emotional and mental wellness. When I think about it, I think about my degree in psychology and a lot of people ask me, like, when are you going to work in psychology? You know, you're talking about wellness. You've been in restaurants. And for me, what I always tell people is that I'm dealing with psychology, whether I'm by myself or with other people. Right. So it's not always just therapy and sessions. I thought about that. I love now having social workers and different people on the team, like I said, and women connected in wisdom. Um, But this is still doing that for me, you know, helping us balance it and give clarity to the things that we have access to and the resources that we can plug in to kind of bridge the gap between our weaknesses. You know, that helps me with my psychology and emotional and mental wellness overall. Right. How are you doing today? I am well. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm super excited about the meeting we had earlier, you know, and seeing the possibilities, playing with possibilities, as you always say, and just getting connected to more women. You know, that's been one of my favorite things of Women Connected in Wisdom is the different industries that I thought about being part of in college and how I get to get connected and I don't have to be the expert. I can lift up these experts and still play in the part that I love to do. Right. I was thinking about that on the way home. I love a good lunch meeting. Mm -hmm. Like there's just something fun about connecting over food, good food, um, giving a shout out. Do you want to give a shout out to where we were today? Local eatery? Yes. Yes. So local green Atlanta was amazing. I used to pass it every day. I told you guys I was working at Top Golf last year and the food was amazing. I had been trying to figure out how to do jackfruit. Y'all, when I did it at home, no, we took it off the menu. Tried it once. We were like, we tried it. It's in the trash, but they did it well. It was you know, seasoned great. I love a good um, coleslaw. The bun was great. Fries were great. Great drink. I love Lizzo and the flutes. You know, we shout out to the band nerds all the time. So support it with the Lizzo lemonade and it was good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Super fun. I really loved how cute it was in there. Like there was um, cute decorations. We'll have to post a picture on our social media. I did post it. Actually. Cool. Yep posted it on my personal one. And I love the greenery, especially again at Top Golf. looking at the green. When I was looking at the golf course, I was like, oh, I get it. You know, looking at the green just immediately calms you. It For me, it, it takes me to a certain place, you know, so walking in and seeing the beautiful greenery, nice space. It was comfortable. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was super fun. Great yeah. recommendation. Yes. Thank it's you really so good. much. At first, I thought it was going to be all vegan, but they have pescatarian options, too. So I had the salmon bowl. It was good. Yeah. I know you and I were having the conversation the other day over at Connect and Wisdom Press about how many authors are writing on emotional and mental wellness, because that Mm -hmm. has been so real this year, really the past three years, I think. but. You and I, we may have said it last week. I can't remember if we said it on air or not, but, you know, everybody I know, client, personal, in our community, they're dealing with like three to five major things right now. It's not even like one major thing, but there's so much grief and loss. There's so much world stuff going on. There's so much family stuff going on that it is this, this piece, emotional and mental wellness, I think is, I don't want to show this, but I think priority, prioritization may be needed this year for emotional and mental wellness. And I'm excited to talk to our guest about it today and her expertise in the field she's in and Mm -hmm. what she's creating with her company. Absolutely. Do you want me to give our listeners the definition of emotional and mental wellness? Yes, please. All right, y'all. So emotional and mental wellness is about being aware and intentional of our feelings in all situations. It includes having the capacity and tools to handle and express these emotions in a healthy manner and the ability to learn and grow from experience. 
Emotional well-being encourages autonomy, useful decision-making skills, and striving towards good mental health. I love the striving towards it because, you know, sometimes we don't have it, like depending on what's going on, right? Yes, (laughs) yes. And I've had to add something else in, right? Because I share this story from middle school of how I realized I was getting depressed and not as happy as I thought I could be, right? Even given the circumstances. And I had to start inserting at least one laugh a day. That worked, right? And we laugh, we do a great job at that now. But I kind of started feeling that way again. And I said, you know what? I need to do a daily dance break. And so I've been dancing, you know, at least I said, oh, you know what? I like that song. And instead of just saying it in my head, I'll physically dance. And I think about you and interplay and how you move it through your body and, you know, dance and play in the midst of everything. Right. Well, that is one of the tools I have used with my clients for years. Like if you're stuck or you're feeling stuck or feeling blue or like all kinds of things. Right. What are one of the easiest things in addition to breathing? We always talk about taking a deep breath. Right. (sighs) But the next thing is to put on a piece of music and move. Yes. And you can move in your chair. You can move with your head. You can imagine yourself moving if you can Mm -hmm. full body. Like the bigger the energy, the bigger the movement and not to impress people, not to be filmed, just to move. And it's amazing how much that can shift your emotional and mental wellness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Even the um, being aware, you know, when you walk us through the the practice of putting your hand somewhere on your body that feels great, you Mm -hmm. know, and then put it somewhere else where you might be experiencing a, a little pain. You know, I do that emotionally. Like, okay, over here, I'm great. You know, amazing mm-hmm. book signing. We did great. I'm I'm great right here, right over here. Okay, noticing instead of judging, what's going on here? You know, is it mine? Can I better something? Do I need to have a conversation? Is it something right. that's not to give anybody else? And I need to journal about it and let it go. Give it to God. Like, where does it need to go? Sorting and separating, like you talk about in Still Point. You know, is made made it easy to be more consciously aware of where I am mentally and emotionally too. Right. I love that. I was talking to one of our authors from volume one the other day, and she's writing a whole book herself right now. And she was stuck on something. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about using it in work also, because she's a dancer, Dr. Sheila K. Collins. And I said, are you dancing this out? And she said, what do you mean? And I said, Mm -hmm. if you're open to this recommendation, like I would recommend you put on a piece before you sit down with your chapter. Cause she's wrestling with some editing and some rah, 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 yeah. like tough stuff. Right. Yes. And I said, put light your candle. Cause y'all know I love candles and the yeah. ritual things when I'm doing something big and light your candle, put on a song and dance mm-hmm. and sit down to edit. I'm going to do that. Down, right. I'm going to do that today. Cause I need to finish my chapter. Dance All right. Yeah. I love and, it. and it's interesting too. We talk about community care and we can bring on an expert after um, that you had to remind the dancer, you know, like she wrote about dancing and you said, Hey, have you, have you danced this out? Dance, right. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that mirror. that's that beautiful thing about being in community, right? Yeah. That we remind each other of our gifts, of our light, of our song. You know, yeah. have you seen that meme before? Like we, we remind each other of our song when we've forgotten And I think that is when we're in the midst of hard stuff, which a lot of us are right now, we remind ourselves, we remind each other of our gifts and what we want to lift up for each other. Yes. And to shine it right back on each other. It's been so helpful. I love it. Are you ready to bring on our guest? I am so excited. Me too. Uh, okay. Before we bring her on, real quick, I want to yes. shout out to everybody that's listening today. If you are listening and you want to comment on whatever platform you're listening on, if you're listening on LinkedIn, if you're listening mm-hmm. on Facebook, if you're listening on YouTube, if you put yes. a comment in, we can lift up your voice. If you have a question for our guest, if you just want to give some shout outs, feel free, put it in the comments, and we're happy to share it with everybody. Yes. So, yes. All right. I'm excited. You want to introduce her? Yes, let's do it. Okay, guys. So today our expert is Michelle Still. And Michelle is a nurse and is currently studying to be an herbalist. Excuse me, to be an herbalist. She is also an entrepreneur and the co-creator of Beautiful. 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 I actually need to ask you, Michelle, when you come on how to pronounce that. We're going to correct it for you guys. Excuse me. She loves educating people 
about health and wellness. So we're super excited to have her on for Emotional Mental Wellness. Welcome, Michelle. Hey. Michelle, welcome. Yeah, hey, thank you. How y'all doing? Great. <laughs> Please help me with this stumble on your name, on your business name, so we Got can it. start it off correctly. It is beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So we are super excited to have you. I remember meeting you at Lay Meridian, right? You were there for the conference and I was really proud of you as a nurse for working on your professional development in mm -hmm. the middle of everything that you've been working on. So how have you been recently? Share what's been working for you for emotional and mental wellness. Oh, OK. So right now I currently um, I've been travel nursing for years now and I just decided to take a break from it. OK, because mentally I was drained and, you know. And I was like, I can't let the cares of this world and different things like that drag me down because it can. So I took I decided to take a break and I was like, so you know, proud of you. yeah, I, I had no other choice because it was yeah. like either I did it willingly or my body was going to do it involuntarily. So, <laughs> um, so, yeah, like right now, I'm just pretty much spending time with my family and putting more of me into my business, you know, so. I definitely recommend when your body is telling you to take a break, take a break. Yes. Take a break. Yeah. And can I just say, I want to, before we go any further, mm -hmm. thank you for being a travel nurse. Cause I can only yes. imagine how tough the last couple of years have been. Oh God. And it is not surprising to me that you needed to stop and pause. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, especially with being a travel nurse, right? Can you say more about, hi, Tahar, we see you. Um, can you say more about how you balance it, right? Because being a nurse by itself, a travel nurse on top of that, and then helping manage your household, right? Helping manage your business. What is it that you do right now to, so you said time with your family, right? You said mm -hmm. taking time off, mm -hmm. but what does that look like with you spending more time in your business? Because that might not necessarily mean more downtime. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, what really helps prayer, of course, for everything, I couldn't do it without it, you know, and to have a great support system like my husband and my children. Oh, my gosh, mm. they helped me for everything. So if I didn't have that, I don't know how I would be able to do the things that I do, you know. So, yes. Yeah. That's really what gets me going. Hello. And shout out to the support system and the families mm -hmm. behind all the travel nurses and the entrepreneurs, too. Mm -hmm. You know, because even as a solopreneur, we know the time is pulled and partnerships. You know, Christina and I talk about it all the time and what's needed when you're not two places at once. Right. right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so you have beautiful, excuse me, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Am I saying it right? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. going to get it. Um, <laughs> can you tell us about what led you to start in that business? Um, so I had uh, been kind of dabbling in doing skincare products before, and my children just came like, Mom, let's make a um, a clothing line. You know, I'm all like, hey, let's do it. You know, say less. You know, yes, yes. You know, let's let's get it. Where, where do we start? You know, right. So then we're like, OK, um, we're doing this and researching and stuff like that. And then as we're doing it, though, I'm like, wait a minute. A lot of people have stuff when it comes to the family, the husbands, the wives, the children, but not for our pets, you know, and our, those are our babies, too. So I'm like, we got to incorporate it all together. So we all kind of sat down, brainstormed, you know, had our meetings and stuff like that and decided to just kind of go from there. Like, OK, we're going to do the apparel, the skin care and the pet care, you know, all together. I love it. And then, um... So we just came up with the name just literally during Bible study. And it just came in my head and it was like so strong in my spirit. It was like, this is what you should be calling this business. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Beautiful. Yeah. Didn't do it yet. Took two mm -hmm. months. And finally, when I did it, that, that feeling went away. But yeah, so right. that's where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I remember, Michelle, we met at the Black Beauty Expo, and mm -hmm. you were one of the only booths. It caught my attention yes. uh, because of doing products and holistic and natural products mm -hmm. for the animals. Mm -hmm. And then you and I were having a conversation. I think your husband was there, too, yes. about mm -hmm. the emotional and mental support mm -hmm. that animals give us, yes. right? 
and that you giving that back and it being reciprocal and it was it really was beautiful like the mm -hmm. nature exactly see like <laughs> it just does yeah, it really does it does, uh -huh. it yeah. does. and then what so for me we talk about women connected and wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. Christine was there, of course, because she supports amazing brands that like yeah. the brands that come to Black Beauty Expo, but she was also mm -hmm. coming to support me, right? Uh -huh. So when I think about just the maintaining of the wellness and the environmental needs, right? People that support you, people mm -hmm. who like, if I'm at my table taking care of my guests, mm -hmm. Christine is going around meeting exactly. people for me connected to wisdom. I'm like, yes. I love Christine so much. Her oh, and yes. Cecile came. And, and, out at that expo, right. by the yeah. way. And, and, and we do, what are you gonna say, Michelle? No, I was saying she was just so, she was like, hold on. You wait. She looked at my bed and she's like, "You have pet product. Oh, you have to." Yep. Yeah. So I, I was like, "Well, let's meet her." <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and I love that Christine is genuinely like that. You know, again, we talk about the shea butter, but before it was with Scad and Sweet Auburn work. She is mm -hmm. helping me have the table to be at the markets. You know, it gave me the tablecloth to put the products on. So, yeah. us connecting each other in this way and supporting in this way has been huge for my emotional and mental wellness as our time goes, ebbs and flows in the business, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love pets too. And I don't have one right now. I don't, I'll say I don't have a live one. We have like a stuffed pet. We have a jaguar that's like in a painting, <laughs> Lipa, okay? We have a little, a little lizard that's like beaded, that's Dex, okay? Uh -huh. um, but I, it still helps, even right. though they're not running up to me when I open the door and things mm -hmm. like that. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think it's about the, the, Cause even Teddy bear, I used to love teddy bears. So if somebody gave me a teddy bear, I just love it. But yeah. it's just how a pet like kind of is nurturing in a way. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like they'll come up to you and give you a. They might not wrap their arms around you, but it's right. a hug to where they, they know how you love. You know, yes. you love that, yes. the whole licking thing and everything. Sometimes they can get out carried away with that too. But they definitely kind of feel that voice sometimes when you're kind of going through different things and stuff like that. Yes. And just to kind of be there. You know, um, a lot of times in a hospital, we have pets, especially dogs come as therapy dogs. Yes. So it's just something that is something that they do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, they're there for therapy. I love that emotional and mental support. Mm -hmm. When my kids were in elementary school, we had a firefighter that would bring these giant dogs. I'm trying to remember what kind they were. They weren't, mm -hmm. they weren't the Oh, I'm going to screw up on, I mean, but they were one of the big ones, right? Okay. And they had them as um, support dogs and they would come and the kids would read to them, especially mm -hmm. the kids that were struggling with reading. It okay. was so uh -huh. magical, yes. right? Uh -huh. Because they felt supported and not judged. And these right. dogs would just sit and watch them. Oh, yeah. It was, it was amazing. Oh, yeah. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you say that too, Christine. I was thinking about the posters I used to like at school. I used to love the read posters, right? Mm -hmm. Now it makes sense as an author and a publisher. But then I was just like, these are my favorite posters. Mm -hmm. So to think about the children who need to practice reading, reading to mm -hmm. a pet, that is a great idea. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about it. So go ahead. Did you have a comment? I have a question for Michelle. Okay. So go you're ahead. I'll go after you. As an herbalist. And we were talking pre-show about you've moved out to the country. And oh, yeah. Like, what is your favorite thing as you're studying towards herbalism? Like, what has surprised you this, the most? Or, or when you think about emotional and mental wellness, when you think about the eight dimensions of wellness, like, mm -hmm. how do you see that fitting in? And just tell us a little more about that. Because I know our listeners are fascinated by herbalism and, mm -hmm. and healthy products. So one of the things that kind of got me like, wow, is like for years, decades when we were younger. So they will always say like, you know, the weeds and stuff, you know, spray this on your lawn and stuff and get rid of this and different things like that. But as I'm out here, I see just random things just pop up and I'm like, they're beneficial for your health. Like, of course, dandelions, they grow in a lot of people's yards. And I know everybody see the different benefits dandelions have. And for all those years, they told us like, hey, get rid of these, you know. But out here, we have literally, I wish I could walk y'all over there. 
but we literally have a huge mulein um, plant and that's good for like your respiratory system. And then we have like burdock root coming on. That's good for your digestive system and different things. And it's a whole lot of different things that just grows wild out here. And a lot of stuff we don't know. And we just kind of learning it as we go. Um, I know one time uh, my cousin, she had uh, saw this thing. It's not like a four leaf clover or whatever, but in the yard, it was just growing and she went smash it down. Her son got bit or uh, stung by a bee and she put it on there. It was healed the next day. It's like a lot of stuff that we've been taught to get rid of. It is really good for us. And we really have to research what pops up in our yards. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I had a friend one time that was an herbalist and this, this lesson has always stuck with me. She mm-hmm. said that she always walks around her yard, mm-hmm. see what's popping up because mm-hmm. invariably like mother nature is supplying what she's going to need. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. At different seasons, different things pop up, but different years, different things um, oh, yeah. pop up. And it's just, mm-hmm. It's fascinating to me because I do it now. It does make me a little nervous, I will say, when something pops up for like, you know, respiratory or something, especially after the last two years. It's like, am I I really going to need that? (laughs) Put it up (laughs) because you never. Right. So if they want to put it up, what 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 do they do? So as far as the muling. Yes. um, has it drying out now so what we're going to try y'all we just trying this out okay. we got the hydrator so we're going to kind of put it in there let um uh let some of it dry out mm-hmm. and then um kind of put it in a coffee grinder and put it in a little jar and then make it like a tea i think that's a great idea mm-hmm. i know when i was working at lupus kitchen there was a um naturopathic doctors mm-hmm brand and she made like granola cereal sauerkraut mm-hmm. kombucha all different types of things we mm-hmm. use the dehumidifier and i really like it for a number of reasons but that sounds like a great way to use it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah okay we have it to wear like um on something like our products that we use for the pets um we have like a balm mm-hmm. a shampoo and um like a bug repellent spray and we use what we call like the pine tar and resin mm-hmm. and literally our trees out there produce that so my son will literally go out there and get the sap and stuff. And we pretty much use that stuff, you know, so it's literally, it has great benefits. Yes. Right? I love that. I love what you're bringing up, Michelle, because mm-hmm. like it is getting back to our roots mm-hmm. and getting back to what has already been provided for us. Exactly. That we don't have to go out and spend $10, $20, like on products that may or may not work. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we have things, if we're paying attention, that are surrounding us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I think about it, that's what this conversation is really at the heart of, offering the resources on women connected in wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of, Michelle, I shared this story of when my mom was sick. And Mm -hmm. she was sick with cancer. And I got her Mm -hmm. insured because my dad had used it when he was sick. And he's still Mm -hmm. with us, right? So Mm -hmm. I said, this worked for him. This will help you supplement your appetite loss. Mm -hmm. I asked her what her doctor felt. And they said, she said that they liked it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, how am I telling you this as a psychology major, right? When Mm -hmm. you're the doctor and you could have supplemented that information. Mm -hmm. And then it's the light bulb went off. Why are, again, why are we waiting for other people to take care of us, right? Mm -hmm. They're not always gone. Supplement you with all the information, like you say. So take this information from the expert, of course, but what else can we do? How can we be preventative? What else Mm -hmm. is, like we're saying, right in our access that we have already that we can use? Mm-hmm. And um, I had just, we went, we were talking about the book signing in South Carolina. And we had yeah. a great time at All Good Books. We were super mm-hmm. excited to be at the first out-of-state book signing because we have people internationally. So to finally get out of Georgia was great, right? Mm-hmm. A great experience. Mm-hmm. Overnight, I got bit by something. And mm-hmm. this is crazy because when I was opening the Papado uh, location in Lawrenceville, uh-huh. I was getting bit every day for six months in my sleep. Oh. So getting bit in my sleep is like, not light right so I was like right Courtney saying that's right our medicine comes from the ground right so I'm like Mm -hmm. what am I gonna put on this 
bite right now. Mm-hmm. And right, so right. I put rubbing alcohol, right, to clean mm-hmm. it. And then right. I had these aloe ice cubes that I had been mm-hmm. using for aloe facials. And mm-hmm. I've been putting that on it. And then a right. Glow ice pack and some Shalo Glow because it has aloe and shea uh-huh. butter. Right. And it's gone down in a couple of right. days. Mm-hmm. It was feeling like it was about to get progressively worse, you know, right. but using the natural is what yeah. has thankfully sustained it. And so I don't have to go to anybody's ER or anything. Exactly. Um, and that's how I maintain everything, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know what, too? You don't have to worry about all those thousands of side effects. <laughs> the side effects list is, when like, the side effects list is bigger than what exactly. you're dealing with already. <laughs> you know? Oh, my gosh. I'd yeah. be like, oh, goodness, this is crazy. Yeah. It, and we wonder why um, we end up in a certain place emotionally, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm looking for help and then I got help, but it's taxing me in other areas, other you know, areas. so it, it's helping a little bit, but how much is it, is it charging us in other areas right. and being able to, again, not judge, but notice that, okay, well, this mm-hmm. is how I feel, or this is what's happening. What do I need to do with that information? You mm-hmm. know, where can I go to get a better resource or a continued resource? Maybe right. I need something in addition to what I'm using mm-hmm. um, or somebody on the team in addition to who I have. Like, what, what do we need? You know, and mm-hmm. coming from that place of being informed, intentional mm-hmm. and right. paying again, paying attention to all those details is what's helped me be strategic about who I add in. So it's more effective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have a question for you coming from nursing. Right. Mm-hmm. You said you're taking. I had to step away, y'all. Right. I hear you. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. so proud of you for that. And I know a couple of travel nurses right now in my circle have done, done the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right. How has it been for you as somebody who is invested in helping other people get better, saying, you know what, before I can do that, I have to be OK. I have to get better. Has that been mm-hmm. Have you had any challenges with that that you've had to tell yourself, like, repeatedly, this is what you need to do? What has yeah. your journey been like? So these last couple of years, um, COVID first started. Um, I did get COVID, right? And so then I start having different heart issues, right? And so every doctor I go to, they say it's stress related, stress related. And I'm like, what am I stressing for? You know? And so just throughout this time, I just keep having this issue. And this last year, it's just like mentally, I'm drained. I feel drained. And I just yes. talked to my husband and I'm like, you know what? I have to sit this out. I was mm-hmm. like, something, something inside of me is just like, you know, sit out, step away for a minute, you know, get you together. Cause you yes. can't take care of anybody else if you're not good, mm-hmm. you know? So I had to really realize that. And I realized all these years, I'm always taking care of somebody. Yes. And then it's like, when are you going to take the time out for yourself? So I'm like, right now, that's what I'm doing. It's me time. Yes. I'm like, I have to, yeah, I still have to take care of other people, but I have to focus on me as well. So, right. Yeah. So as you work on your business, mm-hmm. are you, what do you do to make sure that your time for yourself stays in each week? Are you writing it down? Are you, for me, it's like working out facials and like that stuff. What are you doing? So I still, I take my time um, out. I love being by water. So, oh, I'm going to the beach mm-hmm. as often as possible. And I do have this lovely lake in the back. Oh yes. my God, so relaxing. So I mm-hmm. take more time out for those things. I love dancing, jump roping, running around, doing whatever. Like I'm taking those time out to just do that and just get me together. And I just literally the other day, it was just like, get up in the morning, go walk. Yeah. And at first it was like I felt a chest tightness and stuff and this and that. But as I started walking, it started loosening up. It started loosening up. And I'm just like, dang, all I did was walk. That's all I did was walk. But it just helped so much release something inside. Yes. Me. I so, want to say you did one other thing besides walk, Michelle. Mm-hmm. You listened. Yeah. Your body oh, wanted yeah. or needed. Yeah. Right. Mm hmm. Because we talk about in Still Point, which is the first book I co-wrote, we talk about caregivers and the stress of caregivers, professional mm-hmm. and private, and their death rates, and they are higher mm-hmm. than they're higher than the people they take care of because exactly. they so don't take care of themselves. They don't. And so thank you so much for listening to your body and yes. hearing that you needed a pause, and mm-hmm. um, because we need you here. Like yes. you are like you rocking and rolling and doing yeah, some are. awesome stuff. And, yes. and it's, and it's so easy in our society, mm-hmm. in our culture to just keep going, going, going. Mm-hmm. And 
we're losing way too many people um, yeah. because they're not taking care of themselves and especially women and especially women of color. Like the statistics yeah. are outrageous. Oh, yeah. Say it, Christine. Yeah, and it's yeah. true. And it's, it's true. like we have to have these conversations. Exactly. And I think not pressure each other as women also, because mm -hmm. we talk about this often at Women Connected Wisdom of collaboration yeah. over competition, mm -hmm. right? Because when we're in that competitive mindset, which, you know, there are times for healthy competition, but you, when you even think about like competition, you think about pushing, 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 mm -hmm. you know, always having to be mm -hmm. number one and our bodies can't and our nervous system can't sustain that. Mm hmm. Mm. And I also think that it's... Hey, y'all, this is a great place to take a break, take a deep breath, and hear from our awesome sponsors that make Women Connected and Wisdom podcast possible. Shannon, we are so grateful that Shayla Glow is the sponsor of the Women Connected in Wisdom podcast. And I wanted to take this moment to ask you, when you think about the people who use Shayla Glow, who are we talking about? Mm, that's a good question. I think about three groups really. One, the group that's removing hair, right? So whether you're using laser hair removal, waxing, shaving, you got to make sure that you're putting back what you're taking out. The second group, I think about those with dry skin and the problems that that might cause, right? The scars, itching, burning, whatever the situation is, you definitely need all three steps, right? The exfoliation, making sure you're taking the dead skin cells off. The oil, putting in the, the moisture and then the shea butter with the aloe, sealing it, helping you heal. Those things help both groups, right? And third, for the third group is those with chronic illness. You know, the story is personally from cancer and different diseases that our population is dealing with on a daily basis throughout families as individuals. So I'm thinking about my mom and my grandmother and those around me with the same generational ties, right? And what positive healthy habits we can start to make sure that we're maintaining our wellness, especially because the skin is like the cape, the exterior, the, the shield for your immune system. So with COVID, we have to be intentional about covering ourselves. And those are the groups I think about. I love it. And you know what else I love about your product? It's all natural, handmade, yes. and it smells great, y'all. So yes, as yay. Tested. <laughs> yes, <laughs> esthetician tested and approved. Yes. Yes. What about you? When you think about your company, what groups of people do you think about? Well, you know, I work with individual coaching clients. I work in community classes and with corporate teams. And with all of them, I use a strength-based embodied approach to help folks connect with themselves and access joy, reduce burnout, and build resilience. You know, especially during these times, I think we need it. I think we need all the hashtag partnership power we can get. <laughs> yes. It's that, and then the way that we treat each other when we're talking about the competition part, right? As women, mm -hmm. is that if I'm first, you have to be worse than me to be second, mm -hmm. right? And I have to think mm -hmm. about you a certain way for me to be okay with you being behind me or after me. When I think about it, if it's a healthy competition, right, is... If that's what I meant to do, if I'm if my voice was was created to be a podcaster, right? And you're just trying to do it because you're trying to follow a trend and that's not what you're called to do, you're always gonna you're never gonna be first. I'm always gonna be first because this is what I was meant to do. And you're trying to be in a position that you weren't called to be in. And so for competing, now that's different. Mm -hmm. Right. But outside of that, if we say Hey, I just so like we had the um the poetry slam and Christine again came out to support and it was in Duluth and Michelle. I am not a spoken word artist, okay? <laughs> I am not good at poetically <laughs> being intentional about my intonations, okay? So I knew I did not win and I was happy that Shay won because Shay deserved to win and she's an amazing spoken sp spoken word artist. Um but just being able to collaborate and have fun, I'm proud of myself because we were able, I was able to read in the middle of Duluth, okay, um, mm -hmm. because I was able to say yes and do something for the first time. And that's what I like to do instead of a bucket list. Mm -hmm. So it, it filled me up in different ways. And I was okay with losing because I was right. participating, you right. know? Yeah. Well, well, listen, next time they have that going on, let me know, yeah. okay? Because I, I love a, good, a yeah. good poetry reading. I love that. Yeah. Um, as for me, I don't really look at competition with other people. I'm always right. in competition with myself. I'm hard on myself because I'm like, darn it, you're supposed to be further than what you are now. Mm. And that's what I really battle with. 
And I have to kind of sit down and tell myself, like, it's okay. You're still alive. You can still do what you need to do. You yeah. know, so that's and, what I'm learning. Mm-hmm. And what I, I saw this post the other day that was really helpful. And mm-hmm. it said that you needed every version of yourself. Like mm-hmm. you then needed that version of yourself. Right. Yeah. You know, so, and Christine, you have been this year amazing at being my mirror. And well, Shannon Mitchell says, we're right on time. And we have everything we need <laughs> and everything's going to be okay. I'm like, I do say that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so knowing that, hey, you needed that version of yourself. She might've needed some work and so does this one. Right. And that's okay. Right. And I'm, I'm who I'm supposed to be for today. And the people I talked to today, same thing for yesterday and five years mm-hmm. ago. And we'll see where we are in five to 10 years and it'll be okay. Right. Yeah. Well, Michelle, when I think about that, I think about last week's guest, Diane Hillary, and then our our guest and collaborator, book collaborator, Dr. Cynthia Phelps, and both of them do self-compassion work. Okay. And the studies are showing now, like from when we grew up, right? That was always our mindset. Like you got it, should, should. And the studies are really showing about the benefit of self-compassion and the benefit of being kind to ourselves, that we actually can increase our productivity. We can increase what we're doing when we are listening to our bodies and when we're kind to ourselves, and we are not being harsh, that we are really treating ourselves with love and support. Mm -hmm. That's how our creativity grows. That's how we grow. And that's how we can keep moving and creating and, and going for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Done sometimes. (laughs) No, really, really. And um, Tahara said, that's a bar right there. Right. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Really quick. Tahara is the one that made these earrings. Oh, Oh. We both love them when she came on. Yes, they are beautiful. Tahar, if you have a place people can order those, drop it in the comments. Let's give you a shout out. Like, that's awesome. I want to go back to what we were talking about. Before you go, Shannon, I want to describe for our listeners, because right now we're live and you can see, but for our listeners that are listening afterwards, Michelle is wearing these gorgeous earrings that are wire and that spell out the name of her business yes. that say beautiful and right. so it's, it's they're awesome yeah, um, and yeah. They from her earlobe to her shoulders so if you want some vertical play right, right some design yes. right yes and it's <laughs> at chick natural life absolutely yes. we will yes. put that in our show notes too yes. to her so people can, can uh reach you that's yeah. awesome mm-hmm. I want to go back to, um, I love, I'm loving these. I'm loving the, uh, the comment section today, y'all. So (laughs) I want to go back to the, you listen to yourself Mm -hmm. because for me, people, and even over the the book signing, people are like, Shannon, your confidence is just so grounded, Mm -hmm. right? Part of it is like, we talked about God and knowing that everything works for my good, right? Mm -hmm. We're outside. I think about the Shalo glows, label and I look at the trees and look at the birds and they're fine. They are taken mm-hmm. care of. They are not oh, yeah. they are not worried about how fast this year is going. They're not worried about none of that. Right. Oh, um, but for emotional and mental wellness, knowing that no matter what happens, whether it's race or gender or what ha- Jamie Foxx or the the politics, whatever is going on, if my body tells me something or Shannon says something and I'm listening, I can trust that if I need to go outside, I'm going to go outside. If I need to get some water, Mm -hmm. I'm going to get Shannon some water. I'm not going to say you see her sitting Mm -hmm. here thirsty. Why are you going to? So when a lot of people I know, we've talked about anxiety earlier at um, this meeting we had and just how it's pervasive right now with Mm -hmm. everything that's going on. And for me, that's what helps me stay centered. That I know Mm -hmm. if I can, if I have control over, oh, I got me. I'm Mm going to trust myself. I'm going to listen to myself. Sometimes I might say no. At first, right? Like, oh, well, well, no, if she said it again, mm-hmm. you might want to slow down a little bit and listen mm-hmm. before, like you said, your body sits you down. So mm-hmm. that's been huge as things transition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Something just popped in my head. I'm just yeah. going. So I was just thinking how we've been. This property has been here for years, right? And uh, we just came here a couple years ago and we had this pecan tree. The pecan tree was dead. 
nothing going on, you know, no nothing. So okay. my husband came, he he loves this stuff, right? Yeah. So he's nurturing the tree, nurturing the tree. Now all of a sudden we have pecans growing on there. Yeah. So it just goes to show that's how we are. You know, we don't take care yeah. of ourselves. That's just how we're going to be just like that dead tree. We need that nurturing for ourselves, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, it's so important. Mm-hmm. And shout out to the husband with the green, trum, uh, the green thumb and the nurturing. He is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> and we talk about it. We have an episode where we talk about being like a flower, you know, and it really reminds me of the time when I was a kitchen manager learning more about time management. Mm-hmm. I was always giving my time away, helping everybody, mm-hmm. taking care of stuff. Work is going to be taken care of, you know, mm-hmm. five classes, three jobs in college. Like I'm doing stuff. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And I've realized when I would start to get tight or upset quicker or upset at my team or whatever the situation was, that was the week where, oh, you got to work early and you didn't work out this morning. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's the review week at work. So there's more work and you're, but isn't that you though? Mm-hmm. That's not necessarily work. That's you giving away your time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So when we talk about being full of life and being by the water more, for mm-hmm. me, I need that in my work or okay. I'm either going to have to completely sit down and recharge mm-hmm. or it's going to be off. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So being more full in life so that I could be more full in my work, you know, mm-hmm. and what that looks like now with me as a business owner is intentionally scheduling social time. Mm-hmm. Right. I make sure that it's spaced out. So if I'm like, ooh, I need to be um, selling stuff this weekend and might need to go on the next weekend. Let's mm-hmm. see what Courtney's saying. She said the pecan tree made a major comeback. It did. With proper care. It did. Beautiful analogy. It did. And that's what I want us to be well taken care of, mm-hmm. right? This is not just emotional, mental wellness, so we can laugh once and dance once and be yeah. like depressed and not okay the rest of the day. This is very well taken care of mm-hmm. is where I would love to see women on a daily basis so we can enter the rooms and the responsibilities full and overflowing and able to show up how we would like to. Mm-hmm. Michelle, when you tell that story of that tree, it took me right back to Texas. I was yeah. just there about a week ago and it was um, it was 105 degrees. And mm-hmm. where I grew up, I grew up a little bit south of Dallas, Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. And we had these giant pecan trees that surrounded our house. And mm-hmm. I was out there about a week ago checking on the house and things mm-hmm. like that. And um, I was just thinking about nature and rep- uh, reciprocity and like mm-hmm. cause I was feeling the breeze and the shade and just being held right mm-hmm. by these really beautiful trees and so thank you for bringing up that story oh, it yeah. really just makes me <laughs> ah like my heart right yeah. it is just my heart yeah. so I was thinking about it. Raise up some of these comments. Thank you for listeners today and comments, y'all. More full in life so you can be more full in your work. That's right. Yes. So good. And then Monique uh, Gladden says, Matthew 6, 26, look at the birds of the air that they do not sow nor reap nor gather into the barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than a day? Yes. Yeah. And I, that's crazy that that's the verse too. I think I usually pull up a different number, but that's the anniversary of Shalo Glow, mm-hmm. June 26. So, oh, sure. oh. yes, we are taken care of. All right. <laughs> yes. So I have one more question for you. Ooh, we have another mm-hmm. comment. Let's see. And then I'll ask. She says, Courtney Taylor says, there is so much value in nature. So enjoying this podcast. Thank you so much. Of yes. course, Courtney, thank you for being thank here and participating. Yes, thank you. Yes. So we have a lot of traveling nurses, right? We need Mm -hmm. nurses. We need nurses who are stationary and in their home hospitals as well, right? Mm -hmm. As somebody who has experienced being on on those teams, how can a teammate support a traveling nurse emotionally and mentally or even um, somebody that's higher up? What's something? Because we have a lot of people who build teams like this, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're talking to the director or somebody who's within the system, how can we increase that wellness so that we can keep some of the great people in the healthcare okay, okay right. industry? Yes. So my recommendation would be like just like before um, starting to work, do like maybe a huddle, um, just to kind of make sure everybody' head is clear, you know? Because sometimes people come from that outside with different things that's affecting them then it's like 
unfortunately, yes. you might take it off, take it out on the people, you know, on the inside, which you don't yes. mean to, but it's just mentally you have a lot going on. But you have to come to work or you have to come do this, you know. So I think like in those upper positions, if they would just come together and just kind of talk like, hey, how are you doing? You know, how was your day yesterday? How was your night? How, you know, how is home life? Not to be nosy or anything, but just kind of leave like an open door policy to be like, if you need to talk to me, come on in, you know. My yes. door is always open, you know. Absolutely. So I think if they did something like that every day, just to let people know, you know, that will help kind of alleviate some stressors in the workplace. I hear you. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I could tell you that even as a kitchen manager, I found I found it very useful and necessary. And when we talk about um, timelines, sometimes we do a great job when we're setting up systems that these are the tasks that mm-hmm. needs to that needs to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but when we look at that sheet, and I love checklists, right? The mm-hmm. checklist that we're marking off does not always include the people. So yeah. if this person, you know, just had a situation with a pregnancy or the, if two people mm-hmm. who are working together are arguing, we exactly. need to kind of check in so we mm-hmm. know how the things that we're expecting to happen mm-hmm. are actually going to happen mm-hmm. and not expecting it to be like last Thursday when today is a lot different. That exactly. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. I absolutely love that. We often talk about it with our teams, like people first, like Mm -hmm. we check in, we connect, like that's what we're, you know, it's one of our major values, right? Mm -hmm. So much, we're so busy and especially Mm -hmm. women, you know, we have a to-do list that just keeps on going, right? Mm -hmm. And taking that deep breath, looking at each other, checking in, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Yeah, like really checking in with ourselves and each other. How are we Mm -hmm. in this season? Because there's a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. There's no. So, yes, wisdom and action is something that we do every week. And Mm -hmm. we're talking about something specific to emotional and mental wellness, right? So if you had to share one thing that you're working on, what are you doing for your wisdom and action this week, Michelle? Oh, what am I doing? Um... Right now, I am honestly doing more praying and fasting. Mm -hmm. So I'm focusing on that to really kind of tap into my inner being and see what's going on, you know? Yes. So my my outer side can look like everything is good, but the inner man might be broken. So I'm doing a lot of praying and fasting as far as that. I hear you. That reminds me of my wisdom in action last week. It was um, about listening, listening Mm -hmm. in to make sure that my authority is aligned the right way, even as I listen to my own voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As we're thinking about our channel, and I want to invite our listeners today, because we have a bunch of listeners here, Mm -hmm. uh, to put in the comments, like, what Mm -hmm. is your wisdom in action? And let us come up. What is it? What are you working on this week for emotional and mental wellness? And, Mm -hmm. you know, we love to do it in hashtags because then we can tag you on our social media. So if you want to put that in the comments, we'd love to lift it up. What about you, Shannon? Oh, let's see. This week, for my emotional and mental wellness, I am, let me see, let me see. Oh, let me see what I want to say. Cause I have so much stuff that we're working on. It's so good. Um, I will say, cause I've been thinking about this for a while. I'll say Shalo shares because we have ready, set, glow this Saturday, right? So Michelle, my Shea Butter Company, we've talked about it, right? We were both at Black Mm -hmm. Beauty Expo, um, has monthly events. And we had Glow Day for June. Mm -hmm. That was our third birthday. We just celebrated last month. And so now we're getting in the rhythm, thank you, in the rhythm of having a monthly meetup. And we call it Ready, Set, Glow. And Mm -hmm. we'll talk about the products, but really it's a a open table discussion just about what's been going on. You know, work, and this is what I did to make sure I held my boundary. This is what I'm doing that's been adding to my self-care. And we had a beautiful conversation. So we're doing that. Yes, on Saturday. Yes. (laughs) Thank you so much. Michelle, you may have to come in from the country to join us. Listen, listen, say less, okay? Got you. I will send it to you. (laughs) And it's the last Saturday of every... Thank you, Courtney. Yes, Courtney was at Glow Day. Um, Courtney is also doing hashtag wisdom for her... uh, I think that was right. She put that in. Let's let's see though, because this is what I've been working on too, y'all. The hashtag wisdom and action. It has to be an action step, 
right? So for example, one one time I did like wealth is my birthright, something like that. It's not an act. It's, it's it might be true, but it's not an action, right? Here we okay. go. She Courtney, says, "Wisdom in action. Go for it, yes. Shannon." Okay, so Courtney says, hashtag wisdom in action. I am focusing on releasing the habit of perfectionism. I am trying to focus on having the perfect class, being the perfect teacher, the perfect teammate, and just being, man. I hear you, Coach Go. I say, um, hashtag letting go of perfectionism. Mm -hmm. How do you say this? Jamies, I believe it's Jamies. Welcome, welcome. She says, setting boundaries. So I'm not emotionally drained by others. Ooh, that's exciting. It's important. Mm-hmm. And I am still, let me know if I'm saying this wrong in the comments, y'all. Feel free to correct me, okay? Mm-hmm. Hashtag positive affir- affirmations more often. Yes. Mm. That's hashtag I'm a money magnet, okay? The money is on the way. <laughs> hashtag I have what I need, right? Those are some of my affirmations. We were working on the positive affirmation one um, on Tuesday at our Still Point class. We have a class for helping professionals. And um, we were doing affirmations where you let a movement come out of your body so you can put a movement with it, too. Um, I am says I can create all I truly desire. Yes. And Courtney Taylor says hashtag serving others. Yeah. And then Courtney uh, Dorsey, letting go of perfection. I think my wisdom in action this week, I loved what you said, Michelle, about huddle up. So Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to hashtag huddle up because we're on deadline for volume. Yeah, we are. Got all kinds of fun stuff. So I like that wisdom in action for emotional mental wellness is huddle up and check in Mm -hmm. with each other as we're going for all this. So huge. Yes, Thanks. Coach Co. Yes, she says sign up for my my weekly Monday manifestation. Excuse me, Monday motivation affirmation newsletter. Uh-huh. And I have to tell you guys, this is a tool I actually use. Mm-hmm. I love her Monday motivations. Really mm-hmm. funny, really spot on, and um, it's a good rhythm setter. You know, for me, knowing that I'm going to have our Monday call with our ladies, get some info info from Coach Co. And I'm ready to face the week. Right. We'll get that in the show notes for folks. Yeah. yeah. What'd you say, Michelle? I was gonna say, how does somebody sign up for that stuff and yeah. show up? Listen, I'm trying to be everywhere. Yes. <laughs> right. And it helps. Just, just let me know where. Yes, got you. <laughs> Absolutely. Y'all, this has been such a good conversation yeah. and such a good show. I hate to say that we're right at time, but um, right Michelle, time. thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, yeah. sharing your what you're working on. Mm-hmm. We will put links in the show notes um, to your company, to how people can find you, how yeah. they can reach out to you. Beautiful. And um, Felicia says, I am stronger than my strongest excuse. All right. Love it. I like it. And Courtney said, hashtag grace. Like a combo of those two, I think, might be a good idea. It's important. I love it. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. It was a delight. See you soon. So fun. Oh, my gosh. What a good conversation. Such Mm -hmm. good interaction from our listeners today. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, Yes. We are, this episode is episode 123. So if you are just joining us on Women Connected and Wisdom, feel free to check us out uh, where you listen to your favorite podcast and check out other other experts that we have had on. And we'd love for you to like and subscribe. It really does help us. It helps uh, to get the word out. And it's a great way to stay connected. Yes. I love it. Um, So we talked about social media, right? We've talked about the show. We also have our audio book coming up. So if you would like to get all of our updates with everything that we have going on across our projects, you can find us on womenconnectedandwisdom.com. That will be in the show notes. And again, if you guys would like to join us for our conversation and some moisture, some mindset shifts, come out to Ready, Set, Glow this Saturday at 228 Auburn Avenue from 1 to 4 p.m. And we'll have a great time. Ooh, the doula village. We see you said, I love this podcast. Peace to you, ladies. I'll take the heart. Heart, love and peace to you, ladies. Right back right. at you. Thank right you so back much. at you. Yes. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you live next week for episode 124. In the meantime, don't forget. Be well. 
be wise and be whole. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening. This has been the Women Connected in Wisdom podcast. On air live on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern via Facebook and YouTube. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be part of the conversation and get connected at womenconnectedinwisdom.com.